Hey, what's going on guys? On another episode of Reacts with GBRS in the house. Thanks guys for showing up and doing this Reacts with me. This is like the Ukrainians getting after it. Uh, don't know a lot of context behind the videos that we're watching, but if we can provide you the context, we will. But this is a window into what's slowly, um, or not slowly, it's actually rapidly becoming a serious issue in Ukraine. Um, let's kick off the first one, here we go. Who did they throw that ban? Like, cocktails? Yeah, I think that ban... You just drove them, just threw them off how cocktail them? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is crazy. What we're seeing is you got military vehicles in and around a modern urban sprawl, like just driving around tanks, cars, brads, whatever, and the civilians are being taught how to make Molotov cocktails. Those dudes driving that tank, they're just following orders. So if, if I took that, like when we were in Iraq, the initial invasion, driving around, I'm just driving to do what I'm doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm just doing my job. If you were to drive by in an Iraqi car and throw a Molotov cocktail at the turret gunner, I'd kill everybody in the vehicle and you'd be allowed to. Yeah. Like, you're not going to win that fight. Like, to me, you're just committing suicide unjustifiably. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to be in insurgency, that's not the move. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's scary because when you look at, uh, when you look at these guys running around doing this stuff, it's they're doing the best they can. But now, how many civilians are going to get killed because every Russian vehicle that rolls in is going to be assuming that these guys, every vehicle they see, like we, we did in Iraq and Afghanistan, is a potential bad guy. And they lighten them up, you know? Uh, this is yeah, a, man. It's a mean, yeah. You imagine too, I mean, remember being turret gunners, you're always worried about cars like, running into you and blowing up. There it is again. Yeah, it looks like they just hit it. And that's a transportation vehicle. That's not like a, yeah. a tank or Brad. And they didn't do much damage, but they probably disabled that vehicle. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, I mean that—that's the—that's literally what's happening right now. It's martial law. Let's go to this one. I watch it. I mean, all these are on Instagram, but imagine that happening in your Yeah, this is like uploaded like within the last couple of days. Yeah, dude. Just imagine you're sitting in your you're sitting in your house, your bay window, eating breakfast, and you look out, and that shit is happening. Yeah. That is exactly how they feel, dude. Yeah, and like, everybody's nonchalantly like filming it and uploading yeah. it to Instagram. Bro, like that is a normal, like that is no shit. Like I'm in Virginia Beach and I look out and that's happening, dude. That's crazy. Like just imagine how fucking terrifying that is. They're, God, I watched this. They're gonna get contacted from the rear. Oh. Center people. I mean, they're still on the road. Yeah. They're focused. Oh, that right. dude just launched an RPG. Man, yeah, dude. Crazy. Um, yeah, they Shut them, but I... yeah, this is a bad one. Um, oh, it's most dangerous oh. times taking taking back off. It looked like they were taking back off. Ooh. You know, one of the concerns I have, and even like this, is thinking about the 80s and our involvement in Afghanistan, where we're providing the freedom fighters of Afghanistan, which, uh, you know, the... the there's a couple ways this went about, but it eventually evolved into the Taliban. When you see the Mujahideen getting provided service to air missiles, these SA-7s provided by the Central Intelligence Agency, and you look at this and you go, how many of these munitions or arms are being leveraged against the Russians via a proxy war that we're fighting? But who's in the middle? The Ukrainian civilian, Ukrainian, Ukrainian citizen, who's like, oh, you want me to go and just do this thing, and they get evaporated off the planet, it's like, God, what do we, I mean, I, I don't know what the answer is, but this is shitty because Ukraine is living this and it's uploaded to every Instagram post and we're, we're monitoring a war happening in real time. I mean, it's, I mean, it's know, amazing it's, to see like, these are people fighting for their life. Yeah. Grandma's getting a gun. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, this is what well, they ban every 18 to 60 year old middle-aged male from leaving the country because they, they wanted them to stay in the fight. Um, but it's they're against a superpower. I mean, I don't think Russia or Putin is going to back down at any point. He might have to deal with an insurgency for an extended period of time. And if we continue to propagate that because we want to cause that issue, it's inevitable almost that that's going to be taken over. Ukraine's eventually going to fall. It's just like, what's the sacrifice? Logistics, man. 
Let us see you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have that. I watched okay. this last night. All right, like, he, hilarious. Yeah. That, to me, like, that's... That's reality, but like those Russian troops, 95% of them don't care where they're going, they're going because they're ordered to go. Yes. They have to go. Yeah. Like those dudes don't hate people in Ukraine. I bet you they have family there. I bet you most of those they dudes, do. they have yeah. family over the border and they're pissed. They don't want to be there. Yeah. Like they don't want to shoot anybody. They want to just, they want to walk through, hope nobody fights back and just, yeah. just let me get over with this. Like right now, like if those dudes were there to just murder everybody, they'd be doing it right now. Yeah, 100%. Like the, well, yeah, I think that's the, what sucks is those dudes don't want to be there, man. I wouldn't want to be there. Well, the campaign originally was uh, when Putin briefed it was a military strategic, a special military operation, but it had specific conventional goals, right? This is a NATO country that is conducting a conventional campaign. And if they roll through and start murdering people, that will be very different on the back end of how this unfolds. Because, you know, Kiev, or not Kiev, but uh, uh, what's below that already fell? Crimea already fell. And basically the government handed over and said, hey, we're, we're done. If the president of Ukraine came forward and said, we're done, you're still going to have insurgent elements that are just like, we're separatists. We're not going to give up. We're going to fight to the death. And they'll be dealing with that. Because the alternative is... Um, the alternative is that they come through and start murdering people, lose the support of both the Russians, which they're doing in a way, but also the support of the Ukrainians that were going to say, hey, we're, we're now belong to Mother Russia, and then it, it extends the timeline, more people die. I mean, I, I just talked to a Ukrainian woman yesterday who messaged me, showed me a video of Ukraine and everything that was going on, and told me her mother lived in Moscow, and she was Russian. And so she was half Russian, half Ukrainian, and that was her circumstance. It's like, oof, this is tough. I don't think I've ever seen this one. From this, Russians are kind of being undercover. There's a few oh. that were like running in Ukrainian ambulances. Oh, is this stuff. the sabotage thing where they yeah. got rolled up? Yeah. So you better believe special operations Russian dudes are doing yeah, things like that. Anyways. But I noticed they all had left markers or left identification yeah. markers on their on their shoulders. I wonder what that was about. You think that was their bona fides for each other? Yeah. I mean, and it probably changes because they're putting on Ukrainian uniforms. I mean, like, you need some of the little bit of stuff. Um, you kind of talk about in the military, some kind of scenario. Like, what can you do? Because everybody wears score. Like, like right now, like that is a near peer threat. Yeah. Like Spetsnaz get out, you look just like Ukrainian SF Yeah. You're wearing the same kit. You've all got op score, you all have nod, you have everything. So it's like you need something that's you know, a red band around your arm. You need something a near far recognition. Yeah. Start moving around yeah. in the daytime. There's a picture. There's a picture right after that. That's somebody after that. Of that event. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Okay, so I'm assuming these dudes got compromised and they got lit up. That's the scary thing about all of this stuff unfolding. You don't know who's who. And an insurgency completely causes this fear, this psychology. It's like a sniper, you know. It's like the snipe, one sniper can disrupt the psychology of an entire uh, country. And then you got Ukrainians looking like Russians and vice versa. Nobody knows who the good guy or bad guy is. And then this happens. Um, man, it's an insane war. Um, guys, what do you what do you think is going to be the outcome of Ukraine? Tough question. I heard China is pushing them to come to the table. I read something else this morning that they're supposed to have talks on the border of Russia and Ukraine. I don't know what will happen, but it doesn't seem like the Russians are making the progress that they want. Mm. I mean, and you know what the, so what that tells me is that's because he doesn't want to. Like, he can't. Like, Putin could drop the hammer and kill everybody in Ukraine at any moment. He really easy, yeah. He has the people, he's not doing it because he doesn't want to. Like, everybody wants to paint him out like, He's this idiot, or he's some kind of some psychopath. He's not, dude. He's a very calculated dude. Mm. We were talking about it last night. Like, he's not dumb. No, he's an intelligence officer, a very good one. Yeah, like he's strategic. He's not killing all these people because he doesn't want to. He's hoping he could just walk through. You all established bombings. This is me. This is all what we're doing. I'm retaking the land. Now I have more forces. Now we're going forward. If he hasn't killed everybody yet, it's because he doesn't want to. Like, yep. I hope he doesn't. I hope they can come to some kind of agreement. And they can all go back and. 
Ukraine yeah. can be the Ukraine. But uh, yeah, I hope that too. That's what I'm hoping for. And then, and then I hope uh, um, they they come to the negotiation table because my fear it's it's a fear, but subconsciously it, I feel like it's right. The president of Ukraine is like, I'm not giving up. I'll 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 go down with this ship, which is the right answer for a leader in his position. The problem is he's going to take potentially tens, if not hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians that want to come with them, right? So it's like, are you going to win a, a war against Russia? No. What can you do right now to save as many lives as possible? Well, that's negotiations. And he might say, I'm not negotiating. We're fighting to the death. And again, he's going to bring a lot of innocent lives with him. It's a very tough situation. We've abandoned the Ukrainians completely. Offering munitions and arms, which I've heard we're doing uh, in Poland and NATO uh, allied countries and offering them that to fight their proxy war, that's not helping them. That's not going to, I mean, that's going to extend the timeline, which just means more innocent lives are lost, right? The it's, longer it's you drag it out, the longer it's going to go. Like, you it, don't want to yeah. be in a 20 year war. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. And, and I, none of us are advocating for war at all because we understand the powerhouse that is a Russian military that is armed with nuclear weapons. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. Guys, uh, GBRS, Philcraft Survival, um, we are doing these reacts videos for you guys. It's it's cool to come together with different perspectives, especially uh, from different services. Um, GBRS, all their links are below, including their Patreon. Make sure you subscribe and get tuned into everything that's going on. Um, guys, I appreciate you having on the reacts, man. No, uh, when you guys move here, we could do these like every week. It'd be yeah, fun. Perfect. It'd be fun. That's the rumor, apparently. <laughs> apparently the rumor. It's happening. It's happening. Until next time, guys. Peace Thanks. out. See you.